I am now going to assault your mind with subliminal messages. One of my favorite things about some of the older episodes of SpongeBob is their tendency to sneak in little tidbits of wisdom in a non-preachy, often extremely subtle way. Almost like Dr. Zeus. Perhaps one of the subtlest of all comes from the season one classic, Hooky. So without further ado, we'll jump right into why I think this episode has a message that transcends its on-screen goofiness. Hooky tells about the trouble that Spongebob gets into when he disobeys Mr. Krabs' warnings to stay away from the intriguing hooks that have come to town. Spongebob wants to be loyal, but his buddy Patrick talks him into playing with them anyway. Patrick is quick to explain that as long as you hop off before you get too high, there's nothing to worry about. Mr. Krabs catches wind of this, and he lures Spongebob into a humiliating trap to teach him a lesson. To wrap up the episode on a grim note, we see Patrick stuffed in a can of tuna. Hello? Does somebody have a can opener? The show's introductory commentary can be translated as, Drug dealers have quite an effect on mankind. Fishermen have quite an effect on our undersea friends. It's a normal day at the Krusty Krab when Mr. Krabs just bursts through the door to warn everyone about the dangers that have entered Bikini Bottom. In the same way that substances like heroin are known to destroy hick towns, a hick town like Bikini Bottom. it's understandable for someone to freak out at this news. Fast forward to Patrick's persuading Spongebob to leave work for the hooks. Appropriate for an episode about playing hooky, its overarching theme is the danger of short-term, high-risk thrills. And if you think about it, most drug problems start from that. Patrick makes this pretty clear when he asks, How could they be dangerous? They're covered with free cheese! Don't do that! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cheesy! No. Now notice that like most dangerous drugs, Patrick cautions that there's nothing to worry about if you just make sure that you don't get too high. You just jump up before you go up too high! It's a pretty clever metaphor, really. Literal height begins to represent mental height. Spongebob is elated at the sight of Patrick's survival. And after that, it doesn't take long for him to throw in the towel and give it a shot himself. And like many people's first experience with illicit substances, he has a blast. This is more fun than double overtime at the Krusty Krab! <laughs> to Spongebob's surprise, Patrick seems right. There's no danger. But like any drug, the issues don't usually show up until you're hooked. Okay, totally unrelated to the plot that we're discussing, but Fred the Fish makes an appearance with a nearly inaudible, but hilarious quote. Hurry it up, will ya? We're hungry over here, look at us! My kids are the yellow guy! Anyways, Mr. Krabs catches wind of Spongebob's absence and vows to sniff out laziness. This nose can smell laziness for up to 10,000 leaves! Perhaps he's sniffing out the bait, but by analogy, laziness might be code for a certain pungent herb that elicits lazy behavior. When Mr. Krabs confronts Spongebob and Patrick on what he sees them doing, Patrick is quick to explain the safety. What did I tell you about those drugs, boy? I, I, I'll tell you about the drugs. You ride them up and up and up, then you gently float down. It doesn't take long for Mr. Krabs to set these two druggies on the straight and narrow by describing what happens when you don't fall back down. Vacuum packed in a can of tuna with nothing to look forward to but the smell of mayonnaise. <laughs> SpongeBob, ready to change his ways, is stopped by Patrick on the way to work the next day. You're not going to work today. We're going to go play hooky. And right as SpongeBob musters the willpower to turn his back on him, he's presented with a nice shiny hook right in front of his face. I was going to go to work, but then I got high. Uh. Not long after, he finds himself hooked. A reminder that drugs can ruin one's hopes and dreams, Mr. Krabs hangs a big Help Wanted sign in the window. Perhaps a throwback to the pilot episode where Spongebob gets his dream job. There it is. The finest eating establishment ever established for eating. The Krusty Krab. Home of the Krabby Patty, with a Help Wanted sign in the window. Now, of course, this all turns out to be a controlled prank to teach him a lesson. Do you think the lad has learned his lesson? But what can we learn from this? All things considered, I think this episode did a good job at creating a clever metaphor to illustrate the issues of drugs in an abstract way. Sure, it has its gaps. Cannabis, which I pointed out was likely one of the drugs this could be representing, doesn't cause death. And of course, it's hard to envision how such an elaborate prank could be orchestrated in a world where 
Hooks really mean drugs. And needless to mention, this is simply my own crazy interpretation of the episode. Be sure to tell me if you think I'm the one on drugs. But I do think that some things lined up just a little bit too perfectly to bunch it in the same category as those crazy rugrats theories or conspiracies like the Smurfs or white supremacists. And just when you think you found the land of milk and honey, they grab you by the bridges and haul you way up high. Then higher and higher and higher until you're hauled up to the surface, flopping and gasping for breath. I hope you enjoyed this first edition of SpongeBob Analyzed. There are a lot more episodes I'd like to share my insights on. Not all will involve crazy metaphors like this, but they'll all start discussions. Please let me know if you're interested by subscribing. Peace out, and see you guys next time. Thanks.